Good morning, YouTube family. I hope you all are having a great day. I wanted to share this little devotional with you I was reading this morning, just as a reminder that no matter what situation you're in or where you are located physically, sometimes we can feel like that we are all alone or the only one. But God reminds us that we are not. Listen to this little devotional about Elijah. On Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal begged and bled for their God to answer them. Leaning against a rock with his arms crossed, Elijah watched, waited, and mocked them. Maybe you should cry a little louder. Could it be your God can't hear you because he's relieving himself, is asleep, or away on a journey? Hours later, Elijah set to work rebuilding the altar. He dug a trench, laid wood on top, cut a bull into pieces, and doused it with water until the trench overflowed. What happened next is the stuff of legends and myths. But where those veer into unbelievable fantasy, these events were all gloriously real and true. Elijah prayed for God to answer him so that people's hearts would turn back to God. Then the Lord sent a fire down from the sky that consumed everything around the altar, every last drop of water in the trench. There was no question about who God was. Elijah commanded Israel to seize the prophets of Baal, and they executed all 450 of them at the brook Kishon. But with the false prophets dead, Elijah expected Ahab and Jezebel to repent or be ousted from power. When that didn't happen, and Jezebel sought to kill Elijah, he instead had a crisis of faith. He cried out to God and said, I alone am left. There's no one else, Lord. She's killed them all. The Lord's response was a reminder to Elijah and us that he always preserves a remnant. He said, I have 7,000 in Israel who have not bowed a knee before Baal. 1 Kings 19.18 Elijah was never alone. God knows everyone who belongs to him and even their exact number. Elijah's mountaintop experience was followed by a whirlwind. God showed him that Mount Carmel was the exception, not the rule. If we want to know God, we don't need to look for him in the majestic, but more often in the mundane. He can rain down fire from heaven, but he also speaks to us in a stall, still small voice. The next time you want to see signs and wonders, open up God's word and meet him there. The God who thunders over creation also whispers in your ear. Could anything be more majestic than that? A couple of things to consider. Sometimes God uses the spectacular, but more often than not, he speaks to us through the still small voice we hear as we study God's word. Are you looking for God to speak to you through the majestic or mundane? Second, we might wonder how Elijah could also be so afraid of Jezebel after seeing God do so much amazing things on Mount Carmel. Now consider your own life. How are you lacking trust in God after his record of faithfulness to you? A lot of times our situations can feel so overwhelming. Sometimes we feel like we're the only one, but that's not the case. You know, that's feelings. That's a distorted lens we're looking through. Our emotions don't govern us. We have to govern them. We have to remind ourselves that when we are going through the valley experiences, how God has been there before, how he's made a way through things before. You see, Satan doesn't want you to remember those things. He doesn't want you to remember the goodness of God. He doesn't want you to remember that you're not alone. He wants to drill that through your head, that you're alone and nobody cares and what's God going to do? Don't listen to that voice, but listen to the voice of God reminding you that you're not alone. And you don't have to be in the same physical space as someone else. You see, God has children spread out throughout the world, just like you, who may be going through the same things or similar things. 
And he has a way of connecting the dots and connecting his people, connecting his children, even though we may be thousands of miles away from one another. That's how good God is. So I want you to remember the goodness of God, that you're not alone. And when you start doubting, start writing down how God has been there before, right? Those memorial stones, because that will increase your faith. Be blessed.